Welcome to the Studs Report highlight for the 12th of September 2017, and as most of the team are back in business after recovering from the Gamescom flu, Brian sets a perspective on how to balance excitement and expectations. Now we're approaching an important milestone in Daisy development. Eugene sums up our immediate internal development goals that will eventually lead us to that beta milestone. And Victor reflects upon the new animation changes presented at Gamescom. So let's kick things off with creative director Brian Hicks. I've seen a lot of folks talking about 0.63 like it will solve world hunger, which is something I've seen associated with other pending builds before, be it with a new renderer, changes to sound, adjustments to economy, or even the introduction of the V3S. Typically people get pissy with him when he has to try and bring things down to earth, but he's alright with being the bad guy in this case. Anytime you change the technology powering a piece of software, hell, anytime you change the software itself in any way, you come up against risk. The degree of risk is factor that fluctuates, and it's up to the developers creating said software to weigh the risks of a change, versus the payoff for us as a team, and for Daisy as a product, the payoff is well worth the risk. For years now, we've been internally prototyping, be it in documentation, in script, or in intermediate technologies built to serve the gap between what is functioning on the consumer Steam branch and what is functioning internally on the main trunk. Brian has had the pleasure of previewing, discussing, and in some cases teasing these prototypes and documentation for years, eager to share our intent with you, but often blocked from actually sharing the experience with you due to technical limitations. The 0.63 slash beta update is the first major step towards the technology finally being able to bring this vision forwards. It is not the end of the road, but it is most certainly the most important lap we have made. Brian did not overstate it when he said that the change to animation system, player controller, and scripting language would begin to alter how you interact with the world itself. This is fundamentally a huge change, both internally and externally for you, the consumer. Brian is neither trying to charge up the hype train, nor is he trying to crush anyone's hopes and dreams. It's rare that a title gets the support from a company to spend the time working on improving the core technology to better meet the needs of design, technology limitations inform design within a few small exceptions from time to time. It's been a long road and bumpy as hell, but we're finally within sight of being able to share with you all the things we've all worked on for so long. Now let's move on to lead producer Eugen, who says, The post-Gamescom rush has ended quickly with a lot of people getting sick, feverish from Gamescom plague. With people missing, we were trying to get through the feedback in our internal post-mortem and follow it up in the plan for the following months and weeks before beta becomes available. I have to say that the road does not end there, and we still are dedicated to polish the experience further before we leave early access. What beta means is that most, if not all, features promised will be implemented in the new technology, and iterated upon further as we move to leave out of early access with 1.0 version. I believe that feedback will be critical in this phase, where all the issues need to get ironed out. In the meantime, we focused on issues either seen during Gamescom or general plans that have been set out. Special attention has been put on critical issues of camera that was still up for the refactor, as it is nowhere near the level that we want from the game, nor has the feature set needed. From the clipping issues to twitchy movement and abuse, there is a lot of ground to cover, and there is a lot more as the whole Gamescom experience worked as an amazing focus test on a large scale. We had the chance to see how people work around the new stuff available, and observe to see the flaws in the whole system, which was an amazing opportunity, and I can't wait to have the same experience with other people online, so that we can make this game the best it can be together. The next step for us is to finish more advanced features for melee and ranged combat, additional camera technology to support all the new gameplay, and finalizing the character movement and variation, before we move heavily into Area of Infected, where some heavy work needs to be done. Once the base loop feels good, we will move on to the rest of the game to polish all these things in the new technology. Now let's see what lead animator Victor has to say. It has been a while since the last time I contributed to the status report. The past weeks were a bit hectic with the animation things related to Gamescom build, I think animators did a great job adding all the content which everyone was able to play for a couple of days. We were very pleased by the positive feedback to the new player controller, injured animations, heavy items animation, combat, and everything else that was presented. The version available to play was not final by any means. We are still aiming for significant improvements in many areas of player character and infected as well. The presented wounded character was a first draft, in fact. In the upcoming days, weeks, and months, we will continue on animation improvements and reworks. Currently, we are also working on some new death animations. We are adding directional deaths for all item types and stances. Initially, the character will play the pre-recorded animation only. But later, we will start with directional death animation and in the middle of the animation, we will switch to ragdoll, so that the characters would fall and align with the environment nicely. Another big part of the game that is being worked on are poses for different items. There are a hundred of various food items, weapons, or tools that need a proper pose. 
From the very beginning of DayZ, we have decided to have a nice holding for each of these items. At the moment, all these poses are being made and added to the game. And finally from brand manager Martin, something we've all been waiting in anticipation for, the status of the 0.63 devlog. I just want to briefly update you on the status for the 0.63 devlog that we teased and promised to deliver after Gamescom. Unfortunately, a sizable portion of the team, including Beatty, Eugen and me, got hit by an outbreak of some sneaky virus that we most likely brought with us back from Gamescom. Since we have a very small marketing and community team here, this further delayed the production of the devlog video. But we're back in business now, and we've also managed to get some additional help from our QA engineer Dan Fjelka, I've just butchered that name badly, who's been with us at Gamescom as well. He's recording some of the gameplay clips as we speak, so hopefully we'll be able to speed things up a notch now. Ah oh, damn straight! I could name at least one person who's been waiting for these 1080p 60fps high quality footage. Anyways, recording a couple of gameplay clips from internal build may sound like an easy task, but if they are supposed to be done according to a script, connected with a developer voiceover, it suddenly becomes a complicated undertaking. Especially when the internal build of DayZ just decides to behave weirdly and randomly throws crashes and glitches your way. Of course, we want to avoid showing these things in an official content as much as possible. As the intent is to present the best of what the current build can offer, if anything, it also shows that the build is simply not ready to be played beyond a very controlled and structured environment that was the Gamescom booth, and that our decision to not release it on the Steam branch was very well reasoned. And there we go ladies and gentlemen, that's the full status report in highlight form for the 12th of September 2017. It's a damn shame we didn't get that high quality footage and devlog this week, was really looking forward to that. But the team have had the flus, and I know what that's like having been to cons myself, it ain't nice. So hopefully next week, fingers crossed. For now if you feel like discussing anything Daisy related, be sure to put it in the comments below. Remember to hit that like if you enjoy the content that I create, it really does help the channel. Hit that subscribe button as well to get notified when I upload in the future. Much more to come, and I'll see you peeps next time.